yeah, so our Team first Mac topic kid. was the massacre that happened at the massage parlor in Atlanta. Right. Where basically, you know, it was said that a man entered into the massage parlor, that man being Caucasian, and literally just shot the place up. Like, and ever since, I know we kind of spoke about this a little bit earlier, but ever since COVID kicked off, like, Asians have become a really big target. And that is alarming. And that's a problem. And I don't think that it's being talked about enough. I just feel like it's kind of been, like, brushed underneath the rug. But I definitely feel like, you know, if Black Lives Matter, I mean, like, they're getting slaughtered, too. So I don't, I just don't, I don't hear about it enough. Yeah, it's, you want to take, I mean, your, your thoughts, Mike? Yeah, I mean, she pretty much said, said the majority of it. It's like, since COVID started, you know, the leader of the United States at the time didn't really do much to help the whole situation and kind of in terms of putting all the blame and, and the things he said and when he would talk to the media and how he would talk about China and it 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 it, it really started to formulate you know the reasons why we're having this conversation now of you know Asians in a sense getting looked upon in a certain way and you know first and foremost going into uh, a, a parlor shooting up. These massacres that happen in the United States, it's crazy to think about because it's like these things happen around the world. We know that. Yeah. But the United States is always like, it's always another massacre and the United States happens at a school, happens at a, at a movie theater, happens at a church, happens at a parlor. You hear about these massacres and it's just like, you, damn, again? Do we know the guy's name? I, I can, Did he like make a statement yeah. or say anything? Because I can look up. I forget the um the guy's name right now, and we can we can look it up. But the crazy thing about the massacre, right? So when once the deputies had come out and explained what was going on, um, eight died, six six happened to be um eight, of eight Asian Americans, and the officer speaking on the event said the person's name. So you know who he clearly was having a bad day. What? I remember seeing that clip where the yeah. officer said, he woke up, he said something along the lines, he woke up, he was having a bad day, and because of it, he, had, he was having a bad day, this is he what he did. He was having a bad when, day? You know, when, you, when you have a bad day, you punch a wall. Maybe you, t- you get an extra drink in, your, in, in your life. And if you're a child, you throw a temper tantrum. You know, you, how old you go, are we? You go he was off having on a someone. bad day? You don't call a terrorist attack a bad day. Already, you, already that's an alarming. And then come to find out that officer, mm-hmm. they go on his Facebook, there's a bunch of Asian hate behind it. You it's know? always mm-hmm. something behind it. So you start to peel back the, the wall of who the, who these people are. And once again, this, these, these are your police officers. These are your force. And they're protecting pretty much another white terrorist. They'll never come out and call these, terrorist. these people exactly. terrorists. And you know another thing attack. to point out too is that when let's let's look at the the people in question so you have the white terrorists but like even when it's someone other than white who has committed a crime or done something you know inhumane the way the response is to them versus the way the response is to a white person is drastically different too like you look at all the comparisons of all you know the 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 people throughout history who have committed like vicious crimes and massacres of of them being handcuffed and taken to jail and and, and given a slap on the wrist and, and paroled out in in two years or something and then you look at you know someone who has committed a less of a crime for a, a valid reason they robbed a, a liquor store because they're they're living on the street they didn't have any food they were hungry or whatever they're manhandled down to the ground 10 plus years doesn't see the the day of light ever again, like, it's just such a drastic difference in the way that these things are being handled and the way that these suspects are being brought in. It's not even brought about the same way. Yeah, it's alarming. Like you said, imagine if the shoot, if this shooter was an African-American or Muslim. Would he have made or, it to the police car? Mm, Hell no. He would have been in a body bag. Well, we've seen this. Even, you know, even to take it back to um, the shooter at the... Uh, the church. The church where they killed nine. When he killed a bunch church. of people, the shooter at the the movie theater when he dressed up like like Batman or something. Mm-hmm. The Joker, I think it was. The, the Joker, whatever it was. Yeah, these dudes, you know, handcuffed, you know, brought into the. This these are you talking about guys with guns 
killing and you, multiple and people. Did you ever see the ones where like they have the nerve to like help them cover their face and put like their jacket over them protect, and like, nobody has to them. see their face? And I'm like, what? Like even that? Like I'm just like I just feel like if everyone should get treated the same way. If the if the objective is for you guys to de-escalate the situation and bring the suspect in, that needs to be the objective for every single one. You know, it shouldn't be like, well, no, this suspect was more, you know, violent, so we had to act aggressively. Like, no, if that's the objective, then handle them all the same way. If Mike said it, these people aren't. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about armed people being taken care of and brought brought to jail, and and um, Trump Trump being the president and enhancing all of these. All of these acts, and I'm not saying that it's only during coronavirus where you know Asian Americans have been dealing with this. Obviously, yeah. they they've been. I don't want to make it seem like it was only due to um, coronavirus. They've been going through it. I, I happened to um, my my class from work. We had a conversation about it, and I had had an Asian American um, coworker come in and, and speak to us about it as well, just soaking up information and learning learning about them. And I learned about the um, the word model minority. Right and model minority is how how we view stereotypes, how we view Asians. Right, so when we view Asians, we view them as quiet to themselves. You know, smart. Mm -hmm. You know, take got money and things like that. But in, the, when, in reality, Asian Americans are not. They don't have the money. Usually, they they are. They're they're, they're trying to build up. They're str They're struggling as much as some other minorities in the world. But Due to the fact that model minority is a way to push them into the light as if they're all they're okay, it gets these things get brushed under the rug. Mm -hmm. While it shouldn't shouldn't be like stop Asian hate. That hashtag was going on prior to the um the massacre, but it was until the massacre till people really started to really see what's what's going on here that Asian Americans are being attacked in this country. Yeah. <clears throat> you had that massacre take place, and then you also had the situation with the basketball player Jeremy, uh, Lin. Jeremy Lin, who, you know, during the game, he's having different derogatory things yelled at him, and, you know, he spoke up about it. And like you said, this has been going on way before this massacre and whatnot happened, but obviously when you have prominent people, you know, speak up and shine light upon these situations, I mean, is, is, is the conversations, like we've said many times on the show, the conversations need to continue because that's the only way you know, light gets brought upon, these things happen. And, and I mean, it, the massacre, like all the massacres that take place, very unfortunate situations, you know, the media, <clears throat> excuse me, always want to spin it. Well, the person who's dealing with mental health and, and, and this and that, and then you got, fast forward to this situation, oh, the person who's having a bad day, like, that. that that's, the, that's the wild BS that gets, <clears throat> excuse me, thrown out there. When you talk about the situation, so wild thing that happens when the media throws out these different things about <clears throat> mental health is probably an issue. Like at the end of the day, these are, it's a criminal act. The person who did it is a terrorist. That's that's what I would like to see pushed out first and mm -hmm. foremost before you want to tell. Well, they have mental issues. They and need this to and call that. it how it is. Or first know? and foremost, it's a terrorist attack. If you want to exactly. dive in and, 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 and analyze their mental no. well-being, sure, yeah. do all of that. But first and foremost, the fact that these people, this person, go into these churches and theaters and parlors and shoot up their terrorists first and foremost, that's what needs to be pushed out. And it's not. Yeah. Especially when they're white. We see it all the time. We see it all the time. It's getting to the point that I believe there was there was a shootout just the other day as well in um I think Colorado. Oh, right? in the grocery store. In the in the grocery store. Yes. It, oh, I didn't there's there's because there's just shootouts happening all the time now. It's becoming so easy to just and this gets into another conversation obviously of gun control and how to stop this, but like how ridiculous is it now that you can just go anywhere and get shot up at any time in America? In places where you think you're probably safe and chilling. It's, not, to it's look, not even the back of your head. Look, the like places the movies, that we just listed. Movies, church, church massage a, a, a massage parlor. Places you go to relax and wine and have fun. Grocery store. It makes people not want to go out. Schools. Like, you don't go into these places thinking like, yo, my life, if I'm a student at a classroom, 
I should not be thinking about my life is on the line because I could get shot. If I'm in a movie theater watching a the movie, I shouldn't be thinking, this movie's great, but someone could jump up any time and shoot me. If I'm getting a massage, somebody rubbing on my back, I should not think someone's going to jump up and shoot me. I'm in a grocery store getting some food to feed my family and myself. I should not be thinking about someone might come in and start shooting. That's not a thought that you want to have in these places, but in this world we live in, in this country we live in, it keeps happening over and over and over again. It's not, it's not, it's not a shock. It's not. It's not a shock. You get the notification <laughs> of, of, of a shootout it. and it's like, yeah. damn, another. I, I remember getting it. I want to, um, I want to bring it back a little bit because just back to the topic and about the, the massacre itself, you know, um, I was going to say if either of you guys heard anything in regards to what's going to happen to the suspect now, is he going to be charged the way he should be charged? Like. Where are they holding him? Like, how's yeah, he's, that? Yeah, he's, he's held in the, obviously, you know, they, he's going to get charged with all, all the murder counts mm. and such and get, get You know, you have due. to ask because nowadays murderers don't get the charged. The judicial system yeah. in so the United States. No, sure. no, of course. Because yeah. yeah, yeah, bad, yeah. you know. No, of course, of course. They just, they just walk yeah. around like it, it, it just doesn't happen anymore, but. And Derek mentioned in 10 people killed in, in Colorado yesterday. Like. 15 years ago, this is all we're talking about. There's a shootout in Colorado. In Colorado. Like, this is the he headline news. This is the second big shooting in Colorado this because that's where uh, Columbine happened, right? Columbine was in Colorado? Was it in Colorado? I'm pretty sure Columbine was in Colorado. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, forgive my, me. My, my, point, my point being is, now this is just like a ticker on the bottom of a news section. Oh, you know, a ma yeah. mass, mass shooting. Where 15, 10, 20 years ago, we saw something like this. Everyone's tuning on the news. Everyone's going crazy. Like, yo, this, a shootout just happened. Now is this something that is a thing? Who, wh right. where, where's the next shootout gonna happen no, in, in the United that, States? Even when it comes to these drastic things that happen, like you said before, you know that hashtag was going on before the massacre, and then the massacre happened, and now it's like taken off. But I feel like there's always an event or something so bad that happens that sets everybody off. And the momentum's going for a while, and then it dies down, and then another sad event like just happens again, like, and then it, the emotions run off, and everybody's talking about it, and everybody's fired up, and I just feel like we, as like you know, a community, as a people, we just have to be consistent with it, you know. And I feel like now more than ever, like we've had a consistent message and been so consistent with it. Whereas you said like before, like it just was something that kind of like after a while got swept underneath the rug, like nobody was talking about it anymore. For, for real, um, did you did you look that up? Right? Yeah, Columbine was in Colorado, so you're talking about a state that's now been. I mean, Columbine happened years ago, but this is another crazy mass shooting. I think I looked at it. Fifteen people got killed in that school shooting. Ten people got killed yesterday in Colorado. Like, but what I was trying to, was going to say earlier is when it the notification or someone it popped up on my phone that. Uh, active shooter in the grocery store. I looked at it and I kind of stood at the message because I was like, it, I really thought about it. What kind of thought should I be having looking at this message? Because active shooter in a grocery store, it sounds crazy. Like what? That I'm in a stopping shop or something. There's a shooter here. That's. But I looked at the message and it didn't like smack me that way because, in a sense, like we're all saying, we're numb to these things happening over and over and over again. And I mean, it's sad to think about, but that's just the reality of the situation. And um, I want to I want to bring it back to um, the Asian hate for a second. I want to ask you guys an um, opinion on something. Once again, just you know, listening to fellow um, Asian Americans, I have two points. But the first one is, you know, a lot of these attacks that have been happening to um, Asian Americans have not been going down as hate crimes due to the fact of you know. The, the law of uh, freedom of speech or there's not enough there's not enough proof that this specific attack on an old Asian American was a hate crime because it's, if it's, a, it's so hard to prove, prove a hate crime and I just want like, want to hear your thoughts on just hate crime and freedom of speech because a hate crime how many more years is that tack on to a sentence it's it's this is huge it was like 15. It, yeah, like 10 to 15 that it will put on top of another charge. But it's so hard to prove a hate crime because, you know, we have 
other laws set in place to protect us. But then when it comes to something like this, I feel like it's such, it, it's honestly, it's not even like it, it's hard to prove or to understand more so, but it is harder to prove it because of all the racism that goes on and because of, you know, us being allowed to have freedom of speech and things like that. So I feel like coming from someone who doesn't have to deal with racism, they're not going to see it as a hate crime because they're just going to take it as like, oh, like, you know, something that, that hasn't happened to them, something they can't relate to, so they don't see it, you know? It, it's just like, if they can't find it, if they can't find that this person has gone out on some type of social media or something like that where this, this, this you can see that it was true hate, even though you could, you could feel it, you can know, okay, this person's attacking me due to my race, religion, or whatnot, but if they can't really see that shit in writing, then it's hard to, it's, yeah, it's, and it's ridiculous. Yeah, like you said, it's tough to pin that on somebody. If you can't, like, nowadays, you have to go on their social media. Let me see what kind of rants they went on on Twitter or Facebook or IG or what kind of pictures they post. If they're, that's the only way you can really tell. And I feel like that, what you just said, Mike, too, was you know, going on IG and their Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that. And nowadays, too, social social media um, platforms have gotten a lot more stricter about what you post and what you say. Like, they will suspend your page. They will make it so you can't use it no more. Like, That's Trump. He, he, yeah, to, <laughs> he, he got Twitter. kicked off of Twitter. I know plenty of people who have gotten, like, suspended yeah, from their Facebook too. account yeah, for, like, yeah. two weeks. Like, what are we in school? Like, they're really taking it serious. Like, do you guys think that that's affecting, like, the social media users? Like, imagine someone, like, us every day. Like, how many t- Like, be honest. Like, do you ever go a day that you don't check your Instagram? Have you ever gone a full day without scrolling on Instagram? I mean, when it comes to that, I think this, this, I can see two sides of the argument. So imagine being suspended from it. Like, not but, being able to check your account. The, the crazy thing is... You have these social medias, and in a sense, it's a free space where you can do and say what you want. You can post pictures. You can talk about any topic you want. You can. But at the same time, I think what everybody would want to see in the world, nobody wants to live in a world with hate. You know, it's unfortunate that we have it, but nobody wants to live in a, a world where hate is around, and you got to worry about people hating on you. And nobody wants to live with that. So as much as these social media platforms give you that space to post pictures, talk about what you want. The leaders of it, in a sense, don't want hate involved in their platform. I can't blame them for that. I have a question for you guys. To what extent do you think that those actual, like, I want to say disciplinarian actions are effective? Because you still have people who post hateful shit, but they're not being suspended or blocked or canceled or anything. But then you have the ones who say something like jokingly and it's like, this is like a threat. Like your account, like how do they even determine who's being hateful and who's not if, if, if racist people are still allowed to be racist because it's freedom of speech. It's a, it's it's a great, it's an amazing point. (laughs) It just goes back and forth. Like, I can just say I would, that was just me expressing myself. That's all, all you speech. can all you can do, as as like Mike was saying, as the owners of these social media platforms, is try to limit it as exactly. much as much as possible. You, you're not going to change how that person the person's behavior right. or how or how they act and such like that. But you know, all you can do is try to lim- try not to have it s- spread. You know, because we've seen in this generation, anyone gets influenced by anything now. Kids get influenced so quick in social media. Imagine that person has just a little bit of following. Like, uh, uh, Donald Don Trump's the perfect example. But we won't use him right now. Anyone with a little bit of following, people can, that's what it's called following. People are going to follow and, and, and try to spew without having any type of knowledge. You can have a celebrity right now that says something ignorant. And people don't listen to it. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe that does make sense because it's coming. It's coming from Kevin Hart. <laughs> oh, it, it's coming from this celebrity. Okay, we'll, we'll listen to that. It doesn't mean it's right, but when you have any type of that's why social media is very dangerous. I mean, it's, it's an amazing thing for for people mm-hmm. to to Connecting utilize. Whatnot, to yeah. yeah, but it's also a very a dangerous tool. Yeah, it's a really very dangerous tool. Um, one last um thing I want to talk about that I saw with this whole um massacre and such that really drove me up a wall 
Well, as soon as it happened, right, headlines and news stations and things were coming out and were saying, how can black people um, help with these this um, stop Asian hate? Or how can African Americans, you know, do more for Asian Americans to continue what's going on and stuff like that? This is coming from white corporations. I'm just right? confused. What is the question? Like what? That and even and make and, sense. It, and it was all I seen. It, I think MSNBC was one that I re, I saw as well that had the whole article. What black people can do? Why for, is it when Asia. black people? What can everyone do? Like what do you? I'm. It <laughs> it it drove me. It drove me. It drove me crazy. Um, and obviously we understand. We understand what Asian Americans are going through, and we know it's it's two different. It's two different types of racism. They're getting blamed for something, right? The Asian Americans are getting blamed for a type of spread, and they're getting hate for that and such. For us, we're getting blamed for a whole different situation. The color of our skin and hate. They so it's two different things, and they want to pin us against each other or say, right. "Oh, African American, what can they do?" First of all, what can y'all do to stop terrorizing the country? Exactly. Talk about that first before you try to, you know, put pin different type of cultures together and say. Because here you have these two cultures, and it's just like there's one common denominator, you know, and then they're comparing the wrong it, things, like oh, drove me Asian nuts. hate and, and Black Lives Matter. It, it's not a competition of who who gets it worse. Right. It, it's there's a common denominator that that's the issue, and it's racism coming from a particular group, a majority of a particular group. So. Instead of trying to pin these two communities against each other, why don't we just fix the real issue? Like, I just feel like so many times when racist things happen to different cultures or different groups and different people, it's it's always a competition or a comparison, you know? And it, and it shouldn't be like that. It's like, well, slavery, we, we dealt with it from, from this time to this time, and we went through this, this, and this. And it's like, well, you know, for the Holocaust, like, we were just getting, like... It's not a competition, you know, and I just feel like it needs to stop coming off that way and and just have the issue resolved. I agree 100%. Jay popped in with exactly what I was about to bring up to you guys. Exactly what I was waiting to say because I've seen this posted on social media. Um, the post I saw on social media was something along the lines of, okay, we, we see what's happening to Asians, but like, where are they at when when the whole when black lives matter protests are going off so because where they at when that's happening we just go mind our business as black i saw that post and my thing is like if that's your mindset right. looking at this whole situation you completely effed up in the head and twisted it's just ignorant. you just gonna be like well i don't see asian people marching down the street with the protest so i'm just gonna turn my head to them you add into the problem exactly. if that's your mindset. You add into the problem. You don't see someone else helping you out, but you see something happening to them. I'm going to, well, let me turn my back to them. Then it just. See, it shouldn't be. It's a snow. It, it's, like, it's it's snow it's, it snowballs into something much greater if that's the mindset that people like, want to have. Like, do people realize, that's like, how these you are people. Each other against you. Exactly. Pit. You pin people people's against people's lives. Like, this, this is murder. This isn't. Like, people are getting hurt. It's not. Who gets hurt worse, or who's there when that when when this when this group gets hurt? It's people are dying, people are losing their lives, and they shouldn't be. Young people, old people, like people are dying, and like it's not natural causes. So that that just that's just so ignorant. It's just no one needs their back turned on. In Nobody. My opinion. Agreed. 